Hi, welcome to Morning Tarot, and we're doing the Major Arcana. Um, this is the fourth video in the Major Arcana series, and all the other videos for the Minor Arcana are on my homepage in a playlist called Morning Tarot, so if you want to have a look at any of those, just uh, go and have a click in, and you can search through for any particular cards that you would like, and as ever, please feel free to do a video response to any of these videos, because I would really love to hear your opinions and see your decks etc. So today we are looking at the 9, 10 and 11 in the Major Arcana, so that is the Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune and Justice, and we will start off with the Hermit. So I've talked before about the idea that a lot of um, the tarot comes in pairs, or the tarot can often represent different aspects of the same sort of thing, or the same sort of personality, same sort of situation. Um, we see that with the pages, the knights, the kings and the queens of a soup, they're all different types and aspects of one central core personality. And when I look at the hermit, I often think of the magician as a balance. The magician is that person with all those tools at their disposal, creates magic, uses um, everything that they have available to them to manifest situations. The hermit, however, I always associate with the kind of the sage aspect of like the wizard and the kind of um, the mental power and the use of knowledge and deep understanding and deep wisdom to sort of create that magic in life. When I look at this card I always think of Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. Um, he's dressed in a very Gandalf-like way um, and with the beard etc and I do think of that aspect of the idea of magic, the kind of wizard like Gandalf who doesn't actually kind of perform spells etc as such, whose real power and real wisdom, the real magic um, in that character comes from his deep understanding, his deep knowledge, the fact that he can understand things and he has access to things that other people do not understand and that is what sets him apart and makes him special and I think when we see the hermit we're looking at that kind of influence and that kind of character. Now the background of the hermit is almost completely blank, there's not much going on in this card, he's walking on snow and ice, he's standing in his long robe holding a lantern with a star inside and he's leaning on, he's carrying one star only. The reason I think that we have so little going on in the background is because in this card everything that's going on is going on within. This is a card about um, seeking, it's like the seeker, the spiritual seeker or the seeker of knowledge, someone who's seeking, <clears throat> excuse me my voice this morning, somebody who's seeking knowledge, someone who's seeking wisdom, someone who's seeking spirituality, who's seeking enlightenment, who's seeking their own path. This is somebody who's very much walking their own path. They're not in a position where they're following convention, they're not following the crowd, they're not doing something because everybody else is doing it, they're doing something for very personal reasons, for kind of deep inner reasons and for that reason there's not much going on the outside of the card because all of the activity, everything that's happening, all the meanings of that card are very much focused within, they're within the mind, they're within the heart. It's about connection and understanding. It's sort of wrangling. I often think when I see this card you've got somebody who is very much in their own inner world who is really experiencing the mysteries of life, who is seeking some kind of knowledge or some kind of deep wisdom, who is following their own path. And the hermit is carrying a lantern with a star in it. He walks by the light of his own star, he's following his own star, he's following his own path in life. He doesn't need any other light because he is a light for himself. Um, you often hear that being said, um, you know, the idea of be a light for yourself, raise yourself, be your own light. And if you're a guiding light for yourself and you follow your truth and you follow what's really inside you, your dreams and follow your own light. You create lights and other people will take up and they will start to follow their lights. You're doing it by example. They may even follow your light. Um, you can be an inspiration to people. So this is somebody who by following their own path and their own desires and really trusting in their own light to guide them can end up also guiding others by their example. Um, the hermit he walks only with his staff, whereas the magician uses the wands, the pentacles, the cups, the swords above and below and brings all the elements into play to manifest things in his life and create magic that way. The hermit doesn't use tools. The hermit's tool is himself. He is his own tool. So um, he uses um, his inner strength and his inner knowledge and his inner ability to kind of line up and manifest things. He doesn't need props um, and he doesn't need... Um, almost support. He's walking with the staff but he's not leaning on the staff. Now this is somebody who doesn't need a crutch, they don't need other people to reaffirm to them all the time. It's a situation where you don't need other people to be telling you that you're doing the right thing. You don't need to seek approval, you don't need to do something somebody else is doing it, and you don't need to listen to people who 
are trying to pull you away from the path that you're set on. You don't need any of that. You don't need a crutch. Um, you can walk by yourself. And you see that even though the hermit is a very old man, he's got a very straight back. You know, he's standing strong. He's standing tall. He's standing with purpose. And though it might not seem to the outside world that the hermit is getting anywhere or is really doing anything, all the stuff that's happening within is, is manifesting. And I think the reason that you see this card being one that has this aspect of winter is because the season of winter is when all the leaves fall from the trees and everything looks barren and bleak and it seems that nothing is really happening, everything goes still, it's like there's there's no movement, but there is, there's Im like immense energy, immense creativity, it's all going on underneath the snow, underneath the surface, all the seeds are in the earth waking up and germinating and things are manifesting and even if you can't see it um, it's happening and even if other people can't see it you know where you're going so be a light for yourself and follow your own truth and follow your own guidance and understand that kind of true magic um, comes from within that wisdom and knowledge and understanding and life experience um, are incredibly important. Next we have the Wheel of Fortune and when I see this card, I always think, spin the wheel, like literally like the game show, the Wheel of Fortune. Um, and it does have that elements to it. When you get the Wheel of Fortune in a spread, often you're looking at a situation where somebody is being told to spin the wheel. Take a risk, take a gamble. You know, the wheel is spinning. We don't know what the outcome is. It's often a card that you'll get when somebody is in the middle of a situation that is in change and in flux, when things could go one way or another way, where there are many different possible outcomes, and as yet the situation is not solid. It hasn't pointed in one direction or the other. You know, the um, the chips are still up in the air, the, the roulette wheel is spinning, and we don't know where the ball is going to stop yet. So it's like place your bets and spin the wheel of fortune and, and play the game of life in that sort of way. So this can often represent a situation that is still in an aspect of change where nothing is yet decided, where you can still influence things in one direction or another. There's an element of having to wait occasionally because of that. And sometimes that's a good thing because occasionally we do need to actually stop and wait and see what happens. You know, look for the signs, look for something that's going to push you or tell you to go in the right direction before you just go kind of headlong out to do something. So there might be an element of having to be patient here. Um, this is very much the card of cycles. It's a 10. So we've talked about 10 before being a gate card, being something that's, that's changing, going from one state to another state. And the uh, wheel itself is a circle. And like with the four, the circle represents that eternal beginnings and endings, beginnings and endings. Um, if you look, actually, the, the, there is a T A R O and T. If you keep going around that wheel, just re read the word tarot again and again. Tarot, tarot, tarot. Because tarot represents the journey of life, and the journey of life never ends. It just starts new, it starts new, it starts new. Every cycle, every lesson, everything that you go through just brings you into a new beginning, a new beginning. So the wheel is turning. It's reminding us that life goes on always. Also reminding us that life goes on always is the fact that we have kind of the sphinx sitting at the top here. Now the sphinx is on the top of the wheel and occasionally when you're on top of your game, you feel on top of the world, you feel like you're winning, everything is good, everything is amazing. And you have that aspect, that kind of sphinx-like um, sherry aspect of life where, where you really feel that you are succeeding and you're looking at a situation where there's all this kind of success and great things are happening. And then down below at the bottom we have a what looks like a figure that sort of has a similarity to uh, the Egyptian god Anubis, the god of the underworld. And um, I think what this is telling us here is that the wheel turns for everyone. The wheel will turn for you just as it turns for me. And you will not forever be on top of the wheel and you will not forever be on the bottom. So let's say you're looking at somebody who is in a situation where they're incredibly depressed incredibly stressed out, where everything's going wrong for them, they're in a very dark place, in a very bad place personally, and things seem to be falling apart. The Wheel of Fortune comes up often in those situations to remind people that, you know, that you will not forever be at the bottom. What goes up must come down and vice versa. The wheel turns. Is something lucky? Is something unlucky? Essentially, it's this, there is no such thing really as lucky or unlucky. There is just a process of learning. So if you're in that situation where you're at the bottom of the wheel, you feel like you one of life's losers, everything is going wrong for you all the time, this card reminds you that eventually no matter what, the wheel will turn. Nothing is ever as bad as it seems. The wheel will turn and who was once on the bottom will become on top of the wheel. And again, if you're like resting on your laurels and you're riding high here, sometimes the wheel of fortune will come to remind you that you have to continue to work for success and that 
no matter how perfect you strive to be or how great everything around you is, sometimes life will just throw you a curveball and something will happen. You will find yourself suddenly at the bottom of the wheel. And that is a learning experience. If you live your life at the top of the wheel, then you never meet challenges and you never meet resistance and you never grow. You can't appreciate what it's like to be at the top unless you've also been at the bottom. And this is kind of, it's very grounding in that way. I think it's very sort of philosoph philosophical when you look at the Wheel of Fortune to understand that what goes up must come down and vice versa. Um, we've also got here um, chemical element symbols here. Um, and I can't remember what they're for. Uh, now, one of them is water, salt, sulfur, and something else. But they're basically the building blocks, the foundations of life. Um, and so this is telling us that just as the tarot represents the journey of life, the endless journey of life. And the Wheel of Fortune represents the foundations, the very things that life is made of. Life is made of mixed fortunes, it's made of changes. And it's about how you roll with the punches and how you roll with change. Um, you know, evolution um, teaches us, certainly, that it is not the strongest or the fittest that necessarily survives. What survives is the person, the species, the type, that can most easily adapt. You don't have to be the best looking, you don't have to be the strongest, you don't have to be the bravest, you don't have to be the fittest. You will survive through evolution by being the most adaptable, by being able to adapt to circumstances and situations and your environment. And the Wheel of Fortune also teaches us to remember um, this. And finally today we're going to look at justice. Lady Justice. Now there's a lot in similarity to look at, um, and I should have pulled the card out and I, I didn't think to, uh, with Justice and the Emperor, we've got a similarity in colour, we've got this kind of uh, stone throne, a similar sort of position, this is um, a similar kind of image of, of power and authority. Justice is a card very much um, is associated with the astrological sign of Libra, and Libra is the sign of balance, balance in all things. Um, somebody who's a Libra is constantly striving for balance. If one aspect of their life goes out of balance, the whole thing tips and the scale tips. So justice is very much a card of balancing, balancing their feelings and emotions with ration and intellect. And in its best aspects, Libra is an astrological sign that is actually able to separate emotion and intellect. And that means that this card represents um, a personal um, who has the ability to see all sides of a situation, to see all sides of a story. So when you get this card in the spread, you might actually be being encouraged to look at all aspects of a situation. Remember that, you know, what's that saying? Um, to know a person, you have to walk a mile in their shoes. That it's important to remember um, that your perspective is not the same as everybody else's perspective, to try and see a situation from the other person's point of view and to try and occasionally, for example, a very emotionally charged situation might be happening and the justice card might come up to remind you that you must balance, you must find balance. If you're incredibly emotionally charged in a very emotional sort of situation, justice is going to tell you that you have to be able to step outside of that and use your head. And vice versa, if you're in a situation that's it's all mentally driven and, and you're acting on logic alone, justice is going to tell you that, no, you need to balance the scales. You've got to listen to your heart as well. So justice is the card of eternal balance, and it's reminding you all the time that you must find a balance in your life. If you're looking at a situation, you must find balance in that situation um, to improve things. It's also literally the card of justice. You might see this card come up quite often if a decision is to be made, if somebody's waiting for something. If there's a legal um, aspect or case going on, then you know justice suggests that um, a decision is approaching. And it also does bring that idea of fairness. So when you get the justice card in a situation, it often literally will be telling you that in this situation, justice will be done. Um, if it's representing a person, it might be telling you, you need to do the right thing that you know always in your heart what the right thing to do is and even if you're tempted not to do it remember to do the right thing the right thing for yourself and the right thing for other people because that's real justice um, if you're waiting for other people to make a decision or almost pass justice fast sentence on you uh, this card might indicate that that is coming up um, and that hopefully if it's surrounded by favorable cards that the odds are in your favor in that situation so balance inside yourself balance in your life uh, looking at situations from all different aspects so you can understand people's motivations you can understand what's happening and um, be able to use logic and reason and feeling and intuition to enable you to make the right decisions and to do the right thing have a very lovely day everybody and um, i will talk to you tomorrow.